So when you say you joined Wheel, mm-hmm. how did that like actually come about? Because you said like that, you know, they're a big band, they're a big name for themselves, especially around Manchester way. Mm-hmm. So to just sort of join them, like how did that actually come about? Um, I'd known Johnny for years because we always only lived around the corner from each other in, um, in a little village called Greenfield at the time. And um, I was playing like a, still play it actually, a Sunday residency at a bar called Albion Tap. And then Johnny would come in and have a beer and stuff. And he was talking about, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a band back together, but I'm not go- it's not going to be Twisted Wheel. It's going to be a new sound, new members. And he said, the bass player's just left already. We've only done four rehearsals and the bass player's left. He said, um, and I said, well, I'll, I'll do it for a bit. I'll step in, mm. you know, yeah. help you out for a bit till you find someone more permanent. Didn't have a bass. I had to borrow one. <laughs> Didn't have a bass or a bass. Um, and so I had to borrow them at first. Uh, so my cousin, Dan, who was in the previous band, who played bass? He he lent me um, his bass and um, bass amp and got rehearsing and um, we we played we played about eight completely new songs mm. and Johnny had a solo gig booked at Band on the Wall in Manchester mm-hmm. and he said what would be great is if after I played the solo set I reintroduce the comeback of the band under a different name. So when he'd finished his set and played You Stole the Sun, everyone was walking out of the venue and suddenly these three fucking random <laughs> plonkers walk onto the stage <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck's this all about? And we, end up, we ended up playing like eight completely new songs that nobody had ever heard before. Oh, so it was quite man. risky, really. And yeah. it kind of only half worked out because some people just fucking walked out <laughs> like, they'll be like what, what's this all about because it because it weren't it, it we clearly weren't playing twisted wheel songs yeah mm-hmm. um what apparent what became apparent after a few months was the drummer couldn't play twisted the twisted wheel songs so we had to go and um then we got adam back in he was the original drummer yeah and then that, we went on a run then, which was brilliant. We did the comeback tour, the Snakes and Ladders tour, which was amazing. And then we brought the Johnny Guitar EP out, went to number one in the physical charts. And we're, by that point, we're absolutely fucking flying because mm-hmm. we've done the tour. We've just played Old Trafford Cricket Ground with Liam Gallagher and back. And Reading and Leeds Festival, Kendall Carlin, and we're absolutely smashing it at that point. It looked like we were really going to go on to, to big things. Um, and then trouble happens again. Lee guitarist leaves, Richard, Adam leaves, and then we've got to get two new members in, Ben and Ben, and then we've got to be ready for a new tour at the end of that year. So we were going to do a second UK tour, which was, we didn't stop for a year. But I feel like the changing of the members again just halted the momentum and we had to mm. kind of build that back up. Interestingly, the first gig we did as the new lineup was at Preston Cathedral. I think it was supporting the, uh, the Sherlocks. I see. Mm. John was in hospital at the time. He had um, cellulitis in his leg. Fucking hell. Shit. So the hospital was saying... He can't do the gig. Bearing in mind, we had two weeks to prepare for this gig with no band. We had, we had two weeks to go to this big gig with just it was just me and John. He was in hospital. We had no band. <laughs> so what, what what we're gonna do? So I draft Ben in because I know him from previous ventures and I know it works. Get mm. Ben in, and then and then we think right, shit, we've got to get a drummer. So we've got a week to go by this point, right? So we get a drummer into rehearse. He comes in, does not fucking work. So now we're at panic stations. We've got a week oh. to go and we still don't have a band. Um, 
So luckily our saving grace was that Benny plays guitar in the band can actually fucking drum as well. So Eve jumped on the drums. We didn't rehearse with Johnny, by the way. We didn't get to rehearse as a band for that gig. Jesus. We have to get a special permit off the hospital to let Johnny come out of hospital for two hours to come do the gig, which he does on crutches. Oh my fucking God. (laughs) That's ridiculous. And we still did it, and it was mint. It was a really good gig. Sick. That That's is so good. That think... is... We've heard some gig stories, but I think that might be the most scuffed gig I've <laughs> yeah. ever heard. The most, like, last minute, scratch it all up, like, that's fucking hell. Well, when you've got your lead guitarist on drums and your singers <laughs> on crutches... And, uh, you know, I'm trying to hold it all together as the bass player, you know. it's, yeah. it's it, But bearing in mind, you know, I, I, that was my still my first year in the band. So mm. <laughs> it was hard, you know, trying to trying to make all these phone calls to and from hospital going, John, yeah, John, we've uh, tried this new drummer today. He's not cutting the muscles. We're going to have to try another one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so it's it mad, you know. That's crazy. And by that point, I bet that that for you was like, I put the graft in now, I'm here for the long run. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even that first, that, that to happen within that first year, that's fucking, that's full, full deep. I mean, it? there's another one where we were playing in Scotland, in Glasgow, and we all went out after the gig. But Johnny and Adam didn't come back. This was still in the first tour, so Snakes and Ladders one. And um, what happened was, Adam, obviously, he's a bit of a technophobe, so he, he had like an old brick phone. Um, so we get out, we come out of the hotel in the morning, we've got to be in Dunfermline the next day. Mm. So we get in the van and we thought, we'll have to just go and drive around and look for Did him. Did you find him? <laughs> but you'll never guess what was fucking happening that day. Scottish Independence March. There's a million people marching, <laughs> there's a million people marching through um... Glasgow and we've lost our drummer. So we're just driving around the same fucking roundabout 40 times, just panicking, like, what are we going to do? Where is he? Eventually, he gets in touch because he bumps into a fan. And a fan luckily managed to have his contact us through social media, I think. <laughs> picked him up from this pub in Glasgow. Um, <laughs> so you can imagine what sort of band it is to be in. Uh, there's a lot it's just never gets boring by the sounds yeah. of it. no but that's you can understand now why I'm happy to have a little bit of a break uh, <laughs> yeah. <there you> go. <laughs> it's probably it's, nice it's, to have like one year on one year off one year on one year off and like have that recovery time in the future oh absolutely yeah absolutely. <laughs> that's incredible so while, while we've done some scuff gigs how about your best one so far with Twisted Wheel what's been a standout that like was a really top gig Probably at Finsbury Park when we supported Liam Gallagher, uh, 2018. I think it was literally about 15 minutes before we went on stage. We got the news through that Johnny Guitar had hit number one in the physical charts. Wow. So we were like, oh my God, you know, sun's out. We're supporting Liam Gallagher at Finsbury Park. We're just going to run in the physical charts. Absolutely flying. And uh, the funny thing was at that Finsbury Park, there was two stages. So you had the main stage where I think Liam, Richard Ashcroft, DMAs, I think we're on Wolf Alice, I think we're on as well. And, and I love Wolf Alice. Mm. And I didn't expect them to be on the bill because um, usually when you get them sort of gigs, you get, you get very laddy sort of lineup. Yeah, so I was, yeah, yeah. I'm re- I was really happy to see Wolf Alice because, you know, I, I love Wolf Alice. Um, and then... There was our second stage, which was slightly smaller, still big stage. And all the bands that had been on before us that day, there'd been hardly anyone there. You're talking like handfuls of people, so we're shitting ourselves. Mm. Absolutely shitting it. So we're thinking, what if no one turns up and this is like a mass event climax? So we find out the news about the EP 15 minutes before we go on. 15 minutes later, we walk on stage and it's just a sea of people. And we're like, fuck. <laughs> And we're like, we did not expect that. And for that very reason, just everything just falling into place. Just yeah. made the perfect day, really. Yeah. I think them, them two gigs stand out, definitely. 